Back during the late 90s, things in the video game arena were really starting to move fast, and the transition from sprites to 3D based games was racing full speed ahead. The bit wars were still in full effect, with this round belonging to the N64, Sony PlayStation, and Sega Saturn. While I did end up owning both the PlayStation and the N64 during this time period, it would be the PlayStation that would take dominance in my future as a gamer, and indeed, would go on to have some of the best games ever released on it. The N64 had some memorable titles, but nothing near the PS1. The sales figures triple to what Nintendo's console did. I think it's safe to say that Sony had a total winner on its hands. In 1997, Namco released a little fighting game here in the States. And it wasn't until some random weekend evening that I happened upon it at the local video store. While rebranded as Soul Blade here in North America, it was better known in the Far East as Soul Edge. This simple little fighting game, unbeknownst at the time, would go on to create one of the best weapon-based combat fighting series ever. The Soul Calibur series. But it all started here. Let's jump right in! So, the original Soul Edge was released in 1995 into arcades in Japan. Apparently, this original version was deemed too hard by a lot of arcade goers of the time, so Namco retooled some things, lowered the difficulty, and re-released the game as Soul Edge version 2. It was this version of the game that would be ported and renamed, and became the fighting game we knew in the West. At the time, Soul Edge was only the second weapons-based fighter on the market, the other being Battle Arena Toshinden, which I also played back then, but didn't really get into that much. The intro was really what sold me on this game, and even after 20 years later, it still holds up pretty well today. Check it out. Transcending history and the world, a tale of soul and swords, eternally retold. So the story takes place in 1584 and revolves around several characters who, for various reasons, seek out the mythical blade Soul Edge. Many rumors surrounding this quote, Sword of Heroes, exist, most recently that the sword was actually split into two blades, having been bought at auction by the dreaded Captain Cervantes. Not much else is known. So you select your fighter and off you go. And as the announcer says, welcome to the stage of history. Each character hails from a different region of the world, a la Street Fighter, and each uses a different weapon in their combat style. The game pretty much functions like the Tekken series, in that the two combatants fight in a square-shaped arena, using a variety of harder or faster weapon strikes, trying to deplete the other's life gauge, or knock them out of the ring to secure victory. It features the same control scheme, no jumping, aerial attacks are button and stick movement combinations, there is no jump button. You battle your way through the other fighters across a myriad of environments, facing off against Cervantes as the final boss. 
Depending on which character you beat the game with, you're given a short epilogue to each character's story. That's a simple way of explaining the arcade mode. Let's move on to the PlayStation port. There are a few more modes to choose from, including arcade, but there are also time trial modes, survival modes, and the most important of all, Edge Master mode. Yay! This mode is unique to the home port of the game, and functions pretty much like story mode. In this mode, you choose one of the available fighters, and you travel around the world to different locations. At each stop, you open a book, and it tells a little story about why the character went there, who you're going to fight, etc. It's a lot of fun because each battle is different, with different conditions like sometimes you're poisoned and you have to defeat your opponent before your life runs out, or Sometimes the enemy can only be defeated using certain moves, stuff like that. It makes the overall fighting in this mode less dull than it otherwise would be. Because, let's face it, the main arcade mode can be completed in less than 10 minutes. No shit. The other main cool thing about Edge Master mode is that every time you defeat an opponent, you gain a new weapon for the corresponding character, of which there are 11 weapons in total. It just makes for a bigger experience, because you can customize your character with different loadouts for different fights. As many of the weapons also have secondary skills or powers as well, like being unblockable or stealing the opponent's life energy. Speaking of presentation, it's not too bad. Keep in mind that this game turns 20 years old this year, and came out pretty early in the PS1's life cycle, so try not to be too hard on it. I think it still looks great considering the console it was released on. The characters look good. Sometimes the collision can be a little wonky, but that's to be expected. The backgrounds are nothing spectacular to look at, and facial expressions are simple but effective. If not, in a little goofy kind of way. <laughs> the character representations are always, I felt, very similar in style to Bloody Roar. More so than Tekken. The intro sequence is still awesome, and is one of the main things I remember about the game in the first place. Keep in mind, this was 5th generation, people. The audio side of things fares pretty well too. The music fits most of the stages, and can be catchy at times. My favorite is probably the background music in Cervantes stage, called Bravely Folk Song, and very much reminds me of Pirates and Sailing the High Seas. Another awesome track is the music that's played over the map screen in Edge Master mode. It's fucking epic. Anybody who played this game back in the day knows that music because it totally captures the spirit of adventure and combat and just traveling the world in search of something. At least that's my two cents. <laughs> the voice work isn't the best, but again, it's a sign of the time period. The announcer is hilarious in that he actually interrupts himself a lot of the times. The sounds of the weapons clashing together is good but sometimes other secondary sounds don't fit exactly. Like when you hit the deck in Lee Long's stage. It always sounded to me like you weren't slamming into hard wood, but just someone tapping a wooden box with a stick. Sadly, the game has never received a port to newer systems, nor has it received an updated release. I would assume that's mainly because Soul Calibur took over the reins, and an updated version really doesn't seem necessary. But it would be nice to see an HD makeover. Wishful thinking, I guess. Overall, Soul Edge is a fantastic game in the history of 3D fighters, specifically in weapons fighting as well. It was tons of fun to play back in my late teenage years, and it's still quite enjoyable to fire up every now and then. It hasn't aged that well, and many people who tried for the first time might get frustrated with the controls and simple presentation, 
but it was one of my favorite go-to's at the video rental store if nothing else was available for the weekend. I highly recommend it if you've never played it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Go slash it out. Versus Rock Fight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>